Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a low poly sword. This will be very much from a beginner's perspective, but I won't be going over the basic interface. Make sure you check out my beginner playlist for that. I think I'll add this to the Get Good at Blender series playlist. This is a good one for developing your skills. I would say if there were 10 levels of expertise in Blender, this would be about level two. If you like what I do, then do check out my character course. That takes you right from beginner to advanced levels with a game ready character. So here I am in the basic scene. I'm going to use the default cube, but first of all, I want to bring in my reference image. Nice and easy. You find your file with the reference image. I'll put this in the link in the description but I really encourage you to work on your own. And the easy way to do that is just do lots of thumbnails with lots of different ideas like we have up here. If you want to learn more or improve your 2D art, then take a look at my Kickstarter. And the idea is to learn to draw creating game art. Anyway, here's our thumbnail. I'll click and drag it into our scene and it's facing the wrong way. That's easy to sort out. We can press Alt R to remove any rotation and Alt G to remove any movement. So Alt is the undo command in a sense but it's lying flat against the floor. We really want it upright, I would say. So RX 90, we'll rotate it in the X axis 90 degrees. So there it is behind our cube. Let's go to front view with one on my numpad and just zoom in and make sure it's right in the middle. And you can see it's slightly off center if we look at the top and the bottom there and the Z axis. So we can press G then X to just move it across in the X axis and hold down shift to move in smaller increments and then line it up in the middle there. Okay, so we're ready to start modeling. We can grab our cube and S to scale and bring it right down. And we'll start at the hilt here. Now I've just moved that, but if I press N on my keyboard and go to item, we can see that I've moved in the X axis really slightly. And ideally we want to keep to this blue line, the Z axis down here. So I can press zero on that to make sure it's back in the Z axis. So you can use your location transformations here as well as moving things in the viewport. Okay, to make this much easier, we're going to use a mirror. Now the sword is mirrored across the X axis this way, but it's also going to be mirrored this way as well. So we can do two mirrors on this. Now, if you don't know much about mirroring, then check out the link in the description and the card in the corner. I like to use the auto mirror tool. You can find that edit preferences, add-ons, type in auto, and there's the mesh auto mirror tool. Make sure that's ticked and close this down. Then you can go down to the edit menu on the side here. Remember to press N to find this menu and there's the edit menu there and there's the auto mirror. Now this will mirror it in the X axis if I press auto mirror now, but just be aware where your center point is. That's the origin, that yellow dot in the middle there. And that's where it's mirroring around. So we've got the X axis and the positive X is going this way. So we want it in the X axis with a positive X. And now if I press auto mirror, it looks like nothing's happened, but if I go down to my modifiers now, you can see there's a mirror here with the X axis. And if I go into edit mode with tab, you can see that we can only edit one side. And if I edit one side, G to grab, you can see the other side moves. But we also want it in the Y axis. So I can come up to here and change it to the Y, but I don't want it in the positive Y, which will be going this way. I want it going this way. And if you look at your Cartesian coordinates at the top here, you can see the positive Y is going in that direction. So we change that to negative and we press auto mirror. And you can see now we've got this one corner we can edit, and that's the one corner of the sword we're going to edit to make it much easier. Okay, so let's start moving our shape into position. Let's go to front view where it's going to be easiest, and we'll go to X-ray mode here or wireframe. Either will be fine. I suppose in this case, X-ray mode is slightly nicer because we can see the shape a bit more. If I go to wireframe again, it's a bit harder to see the outline against this black. So solid mode and X-ray mode. Now the reason I'm doing that is because then I can box select like this, click and drag and box select and press G and move the back vertices as well as the front. You can see this vertex here and here have moved as well. So do remember to box select, I'll press one to go to front view again and G to grab, box select, G to grab. So I'll move these two, G to grab and move them to there. So if I just click once and press G to grab, you can see the other one in the background not moving. So just be aware of that. Now I need to extrude out this way. So I can select all these vertices and press E to extrude. Let's go out to about here. You're looking for sort of major changes in the curve and that's where you're going to put a point. So one here, one here, and maybe a couple up here. And then I can box select these bottom ones, G to grab and put them into position and these ones as well. And just make some minor adjustments. So again, box select these. That gives you this entire face, but it leaves you in vertex mode. You could do this in face mode, select that face and extrude it out. But then to move the vertices, you have to go back to vertex mode. So one to go to front view again, E to extrude, and then box select these verts up here. If for any reason you're not in vertex mode, 
make sure you have it ticked up the top here. E to extrude, G to grab. You can move them both together or move them separately like this. So this probably needs a little bit more around the curve here. E to extrude, G to grab. And I'm slowly kind of rotating the shape up to the end here. This might need a bit more movement though. So what we're looking out for is not too much of the black showing around the edges, but it is low poly, so it can be that sort of blocky look and that's absolutely fine. So select these two at the end here, E to extrude, and we'll have two more, I think, one here, and one the smaller one, E to extrude, pull it up, G to grab. And you can put them right together if you like, but I like to have a squared out end, just stylistically, but you can make these into a triangle if you want to. In order to do that, you must have the auto merge on. So I turn that on and I can get this one, GG to edge slide and GG to edge slide and it will go into a point like this. The auto merge means that this will now be a single vert rather than two vertices on top of each other. I'm going to undo that because I prefer it with just a blocky end like this. There is a bit to do in the Y axis. As you can see, it's a very fat hilt at the moment. So we can sort that out now. We can grab these, G to grab in the Y, G then Y and pull those in. And you'll probably want the hilt going inwards slightly here. So grab these, G to grab in the Y and have it going inwards. Maybe a bit of a curve to that. So G then Y with these ones. So it sort of slowly goes into a point there. We'll adjust those a bit more later on. Okay, so now for the blade. So we need the blade sticking out here. So lots of people here would press Control R and do a loop cut around the middle there. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but it does add an awful lot of polygons. And it can kind of complicate things unnecessarily. So I'll press escape on that to undo that. What we actually want to do, if I go to one and front view, is just move both these out just really slightly. So G and then just move them out just a touch. And the reason for doing that is then we can take this face here. So three to go to face mode and select the face. And then we can press I to inset and bring that in. Now it's not quite working properly. If you have a look, We've got an extra face here and here, and I actually want it to be linked up and have one face there. So I'll just undo that. And when you press inset, if you press B for boundary, it will act like I want it to. So it won't include those boundaries. So there we go. So I've gone and inset it towards the blade here. So back to front view, and then I can press E to extrude and pull it upwards. And remember that's E to extrude, not G to grab. And then let's go back to vertex mode and do our usual thing of just moving these into position. So again, fairly straightforward, same procedure. Box selecting these things, E to extrude. Get the main shape first. Don't worry too much about these areas here for now because you can fill in the details afterwards and I'll show you how to do that. So for these curves, just do two and we'll stop there for now. And I'll talk about the blade at the top in a second. Okay, so I've done the basic shape. Now I can press Control R and do a loop cut, double left click, and then I can move these outside vertices. So control R, double left click. I find that a bit faster to get the main shape first and then just sort of fill in. But it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Okay, so we want some sharpness to this blade. So we can select this vertex here and control click this one down at the bottom and that selects all the ones in between with the shortest route. If I press one on my keyboard, G to grab in the X axis, then I can bring this in and give it a blade. Okay, there's one issue here. You can see that this has gone straight in the x-axis and brought it in like that. So actually, I'm going to undo that and take off this vertex here and then press G to grab in the x-axis and move those across. And with this one, I'm going to press GG to edge slide and move it roughly the same distance. That way, this will stay planar, so it will stay flat. Okay, what do we do at the top here? Well, we can just grab this one here, G to grab in the Z and pull it up. Needs a tiny bit of tidying, so back to front view and let's move this one up a little bit so we've got sort of an equal looking distance between these. Remember to GG to edge slide. And I think that's looking nice. So your challenge now is to have a go at the handle doing the same sort of technique. Make sure you saved your work first and then if you get stuck, you can see how I've done it. Okay, so let's come round to the handle. Three to go to face mode, select that face there. I to inset. Remember, you must have boundary deselected or selected. I can't remember which way it is, but you can see the menu down here. And there we go, boundary is turned off. One to go to front view, E to extrude. And let's get just the main shape first, E to extrude. You might find it easy in vertex mode, so switch to vertex mode with one. G to grab, 
and E to extrude. And for this last bit, E to extrude, and we can just pull this out this way. Just get the front view to start off with, E to extrude, following those major shape changes here, 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 and here. E to extrude, grab that edge, pull it in, and E to extrude, grab that edge and put it in. Now it's a case of going around to the side and thinking how we want this to look. I would say we want this one to the bottom here. Remember, control click to select the ones in between as well. G, then Y, and I'm bringing it out, but not too far so it doesn't interrupt the hilt. I might bring the hilt out a little bit further. So G, then Y, and this as well to the bottom here, G, then Y. Okay, so we've got a bit of a curve there. We want this one from here down to the bottom here, so control click. Oh, actually, remember we don't want this one, so I can control box select and that will delete that selection. And then to front view, G to grab in the X and pull that in to create a bit of a curve. And then this one we use the edge slide, so GG to edge slide to create more of a curve. That keeps this planar. I didn't choose this bottom one because that needs a bit of adjusting, doesn't it? I would say this one needs to come in, so G then Y. And this one as well, G then Y, so it's got quite a small end here. We can select both of these, actually, and G then Y once we've got the right shape. And these two, in fact, maybe these four, G then Y, move that out. And we're starting to get the idea now, aren't we? These can probably come in a bit more, so G then X. And it's looking quite nice. OK, so what about those character elements? Remember creating the notches? I talked about that in the last episode about vital tips. Check out the link in the description. Now for this, we don't want character elements to appear on the other side. We do want it on this side, of course, but not this side. So we've got two mirrors here. We've got the X mirror in our modifiers and the Y mirror underneath it just here. So the Y mirror I want to keep because anything I do this side, I want to appear on the other side. But the X mirror across this side, I want to apply. So I can come up to the X mirror here. Now in 2.9, you've got a drop down menu. I've only just realized I'm using 2.83. I have both versions on my machine. But you'll find the drop down menu around here and there's an apply. For 2.8 users, it's here. But you can't use it in edit mode. If I hover over, it will say it's disabled. So out of edit mode and apply the X axis mirror. So apply. Now you must make sure you're happy with your shape before you do that, of course. But now we're just left with the Y mirror. And if I go into edit mode, we've got both sides and I can take one and edit one side. If I press G to grab, it will still affect the back side of this though. We can hide our background image. So I can go up to the empty here and hide that because we don't need it anymore. And let's go to front view again and we're gonna create a notch in here. So the easiest way to do that, go to edge mode, control B to bevel. So we create a bevel there and use your wheel to go up one and that creates the cut in the middle. Then make sure that auto merge is on. Go to vertex mode with one and GG with this vert there and just G with that one. And we got a simple notch. Okay, so your challenge is to create one up here as well. Or maybe on the other side, one up here. Okay, so that concludes this episode. You've probably got enough to be going on with now. Most of you will be able to do the rocks and texture, especially if you've looked at my other beginner tutorials. If you're desperate for me to do that as well, then I'm quite happy to, but just comment below. And if enough people ask, then I'm happy to do a part two. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.